it and post it on the YouTube site, www.youtube.com forward slash all things facts. Before we begin, I'd like to tell you a little bit about us. DM Technologies was founded in 1990 in Richardson, Texas. Our solutions offerings include open text write facts and cloud facts solutions, along with advanced document capture, document management and workflow, secure mail, and managed file transfer. We're a solutions provider for M-Files, offering on-premise, hybrid, and cloud document management and workflow solutions. The M-Files approach to managing information is by what's stored, not where it's stored. Today, Robin Dixon and Chris Bradford join us from M-Files to present to you, again, why accounting has the most to gain from document management. Robin will talk about an accounting department that saw immediate benefits from eliminating paper processes by digitizing documents and creating workflows. And then Chris is going to provide us a high-level demo on an accounting vault. At this time, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Robin. Thanks, Michelle. So once again, thank you everybody for joining us. I'm Robin Dixon from M Files. I'm the account manager here. And without further ado, I'm going to jump into our, our kind of PowerPoint part of this. There we have, to the agenda, we're going to do an overview of document management, just to kind of set the background. We'll do a case study on Nativa, who's a customer that we engaged with. Then we'll have a demo of the M-File solution, and then we'll have Q&A at the end. So when talking about document management, uh, most people kind of, like to say, roll their eyes when we talk about this subject because in the past or currently, it's very uh, complex to use. And because of the complexity, there tends to be a low user adoption rate. Um, Gartner and other sources say there's about an 8 to 10 percent user adoption rate for content management. With that being said, one of the biggest issues is it's still their independent silos of information and traditional document management systems are not able to pull in the CRM or your ERP or your accounting or whatever you have for software. And last but not least, a lot of them are very IT centric. So if you in accounting needed to go and have a workflow process set up, it becomes a very painful process of working with the IT department and you're at their mercy. And second is uh, managing permissions on a document. So if you create a document that you only want certain people to see, once again, you have to go to the IT department to set that permission. What you'll see when we show you and Chris gets into the user interface of M-Files, it's truly a simple interface. Um, we integrate right out of the box with Microsoft Office. So what we like to say is if an end user knows how to use Microsoft Office, then they know how to use M-Files. One of the only content management solutions on the market that can claim that. And because of that integration, I truly believe it's the key to our success as a company. Uh, we have the highest user adoption rate on the market. It takes us about two hours to train an end user on how to use M-Files, once again, because our integration with Microsoft Office. And we have about a 97% user adoption rate. And we, you know, we have accolades from Forrester and Gartner, and if you read anything about our product, what they say is the number one thing is the ease of use. And then we go to the information silos. Because our technology was built 11 years ago, we did it with the concept of being able to, out of the box, integrate with anybody that has an OLE or ODBC backend database. And we do that without having to do much, much configuration. So because of that, we are able to connect into your ERP system, your accounting system, your CRM system right out of the box, and kind of take down those information silos. <clears throat> and last but not least, as Chris will show you, we give control back to the end user. So now, as a accounting person, you are able to create your own workflows easily, if wanted, and you can also set permissions on documents if you want to lock it down and not have other people in the organization have access to it, only have a few. And we'll show you how easy that is. So what we like to say about, you know, what if you could access anything at any time instantly? It didn't matter if you were sitting at your desk. You now can have the same access or usability or function that you do with your laptop or desktop that you do with your mobile phone or your smart device. So now you can access anything, anywhere, at any time. And then once again, we like to pose, what if you could run your business without bothering the IT department? We give that the user the control. You can now set up your own workflows. You can manage document permissions. You can allow sharing for contractors, reorganize server folders, whatever you need to do to get your 
specific job, job done. So we talk about something called dynamic content management. So um, other, we do everything as metadata driven. So what we do is we like to tag documents and information based upon what it is. Is it a document? Who's the customer associated with it? And date and permissions. Traditional content management systems still use a folder structure. And we believe as a company that a folder structure is as antiquated as having a filing cabinet in your office. It just doesn't make sense anymore. The minute you put that file in the filing cabinet, you now created something called static content, the same with a folder structure. Once you decide the folder that it needs to go to, you've created static content that's not easily searched or found. With us, we get rid of the idea of a folder structure and we move to more so what a document is. Is it an invoice? Is it a proposal? Who's the customer it's associated with the date and permissions? And when we tag it with information, it now becomes dynamic content that can be searched and found. And many people ask me, Robin, what does M files do? And basically what I say is it's Google on steroids for all of your data. So now you have the ability, like a Google search bar, we give you that and Chris will show you, you can now locate any kind of data in the central repository by simply doing what you would do for a Google search. So to kind of give this analogy of this folderless world that we're talking about, I like to use the example of an iPhone. So if you have an iPhone and you download something from iTunes, where do you save that song on your iPhone? The answer is you don't. So when you download it, all of a sudden you go to pull up your new favorite song that you just downloaded from Blake Shelton, and he automatically shows up on the under the country genre. Oh, and it's associated with his album that it's with because you've already downloaded two other songs from there, and it put it under his, his artist name. You didn't have to save it there. It automatically did that. How did it know to do that? The reason why is when you download a song from iTunes, it's tagged with metadata, or what we like to call information. And because of that information, what it does is it takes one version of that song, and the genre, the album, the artist are actually virtual views. You could think of them almost as virtual folders. Now with these virtual folders, you have one copy of the song that now shows up under multiple ways that you want to see it. Long gone are the days where you'd have to have, you know, five copies of the same song to save it in the genre folder or the album folder. You now once again have that one copy. Um, another great thing that you can do with content management or document management solutions, especially M files, is you can save directly from Outlook. So you have the ability to drag and drop emails and attachments from Outlook. Another great thing you can do is create smart folders. So if you're in accounting and you're getting a lot of invoices, POs, orders, or things like that via email, you simply can go from your email, drag and drop that email into, let's say, the invoices folder, because I just received a, an invoice. And once I do that, it can kick off an automatic workflow process. So now, whoever is Sally in accounting that gets all invoices, she'll get an email with a link to that invoice, letting her know that an action or a workflow needs to be completed. And once again, you can create any type of um, workflows. And the great thing about it is you can also be notified, say if an invoice goes in the system and it's you know, gonna be past 30 days due and the person that was supposed to approve it has yet to do that, you too can get an email letting you know that it's yet to be approved and it's about to come up on 30 days past due. You can set up any kind of reviews, approvers, readers, you can set up notifications and assignments and it's easy to do. Another great thing about M files is you can access M files via the browser of your choice. So it mimics the Windows client. So whether you're at home or on the go or on your phone, you have access from any platform, Windows, Mac, or Linux. And because of this access, you now can give your customers access to the web portal, subcontractors, and public internet users. So another key thing about um, our solution is the access anywhere. So we've invested very a lot of our R&D money into the mobile app because what we truly see is, you probably see too, it's a truly mobile workforce. So because of that, um, our mobile app works natively in iPhone, iPad, Android, and Windows phones. And what you can now do on your desktop and your laptop, you can do on your smartphone or your tablet. You can view documents. You can continue a workflow process. 
So long gone are the days that your CFO is away and whoever needs to approve something doesn't have access to it. They will now get access to it on their phone and they can go to assignments that they have and they can look at the invoice or whatever they need to approve and then they're able to hit the approve button and we can track that process all the way through to their smart device. And we also have something called e-signatures that they can also apply to documents needed for standard operating procedures. Another thing about M-Files is we have a very flexible deployment. We have a cloud solution, we have an on-premise, and a hybrid solution. So we do business however you do business. And one of the last but not least things that we do, which I think is most important, is we play, play nice with others. So M-Files out of the box can integrate with almost any ERP system, any CRM system, um, so Microsoft Dynamics, SharePoint, Office, Salesforce, ConnectWise, Autotask, I mean, it, the options are endless. The M-Files um, API connects to virtually any database. So with that being said, I wanted to get into a customer that we had. Um, they're called Nutiva. And Nutiva makes these natural um, coconut oils and supplements and things like that. And their business, because it was organic, it started to really take off. And when it did, they had a problem. The growth led to a massive influx in the amount of AP documents. So now they have this, what was a very paper-centric process that worked for, you know, a small company. They had a, they didn't have a way to manage it now, and it was growing and growing. And the reaction to the growing is they started to lose invoices. It took them too long to process the invoices. And because it took them longer to process the invoices, they were slow to get paid. And they were looking at adding more headcount, as everybody knows, which can be more expensive. The solution they were looking to do was, they wanted to digitize and streamline the invoice process. They wanted the ability to create workflows and track them. Because it's one thing if you hand something off to someone, but you got to make sure it's done and in a timely manner. And they want to be able to get paid faster because the efficiency in the invoicing process would allow them to do that. They wanted the ability to prove tasks on the go with mobile access. And they wanted to be able to reach and find documents or invoices. And also set up a kind of parent-child relationship between documents. So I wanted to maybe take the invoice that came in and also see the check that's associated with it and perhaps the proposal that was sent out all in one view so they can make sure, or the packing slip that came, that everything that they needed to rectify it was there in one view. So they purchased M-Files after looking at a lot of other solutions. And one of the benefits, many of the benefits, was the less time spending, spent searching and looking for documents. Because we have that Google on steroids where they can find any documents based upon a little piece of information or multiple pieces of information. Their month-end process took them now half the time. The invoices were processed in a third of the time, and because of that, they were being paid faster. And last but not least, because we have version control, and now you only have one copy of a document, they no longer had questions about current versions. Is this the last invoice? Is this the most up-to-date? They, they eliminated that problem. This is Nutiva, the coconut oil. This is, you know, they're the fast growing business as you can see in this market when we're all kind of health conscious. So the quote that they came from, that came from them is, we evaluated several AP workflow solutions, but they didn't meet our scalability requirements or provide quick and easy access to AP documentation, said Ina Nujar. That's the controller at Nutiva. We selected M-Files because it's superior search functionality advanced access management capabilities, and the mobile task management functionality. The M-Files implementation process was increasingly fast. We were up and running in two days, which I think is key. They're stating that they, from the day we came in to implement it to the day we trained them, took two days. I was able to set up all of our document classes, access permissions and workflows myself, with having to involve my IT department and we quickly began to experience document handling and process efficiencies. And that came straight from our customers' mouths. And I can share that case study with you guys and others if interested. I just want to give you a high-level overview. So kind of concluding in the PowerPoint part, if people say, hey, Robin, what's different about M-Files content management or document management solution than others in the market? Why would we look at you, yours? Because it's metadata-driven, and we care about what it is versus where it is, you now have Google on steroids for any of your data. You can search the content of a document, or you can search the metadata that you tagged it with. 
Our flexible deployment, cloud, on-premise, and hybrid, not a lot of our competitors offer that. It's simply yet highly configurable. Um, I think the key to our product is the instant familiarity because of the integration of, with Windows. Once again, if you know Microsoft Office, then you know M files. Our ability to integrate well with others out of the box with whatever ERP system that you're working with, um, marketing, sales, everybody, whatever. If one has a, once again, an OLE or ODBC backend database, we can connect. And then last but not least is the money that we spent on the accessibility on every device. So giving that mobile app, truly giving the productivity to someone who is in the field. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Chris, who's going to do a live demo of M-Files. And he's going to go over structuring and storing documents based on taxation and revenue, meeting compliance standards, and workflow process. So without further ado, we'll kind of get over to the product. OK, thanks, Robin. Uh, my name is Chris Bradford. I'm a sales engineer with M-Files, uh, working with our channel partners and, and uh, DM technologies. And I'm going to do a kind of a quick walkthrough of the product with you and, and specifically around these accounting topics. So where I want to start right now is just showing you how M-Files is integrated into the Windows environment and the operating system. But with most uh, document management systems, you'll find an application that is separate and apart from the way that you typically are working with your files and storing those files, which requires you to uh, drag and drop the files in or have to upload. And so what I want to show you initially with M files is that because we're integrated into Windows, I could just go to computer or into my Windows Explorer, and you'll see that M-Files shows up as a virtual drive uh, of any drive letter that you want that to be. So tip, you know, generally we uh, show up as an M drive for M-Files, but that can actually be any drive letter that you want. And the key to this is that that allows us to integrate with any Windows program because from those other applications, you can choose file open or file save as and immediately get documents into or out of M files by uh, opening and saving directly through that drive letter. So that's uh, really a, one of the key things as far as our usability is that we're not really asking you to change the way that you work. You can continue opening and saving files like normal just from a drive letter that looks like a shared drive. but it does have the functionality, the full functionality of a document management system behind that drive letter. So if I double click into this drive, what you'll see here is I'm on an, in a demo environment that actually has a lot of vaults in it. And the vault is really just where we are storing all of these documents and that metadata information that's attached to the documents to help us find it. So with most organizations, you would really just have a single vault because with our permission structure that you'll see as we go through the demo, our permissions allow you to uh, divide up the information according to who needs to see it and when they need to have access. So in the same way that you might have right now a single share drive in your organization, and you're just using permissions to divide up who can see which areas, we can do the same thing in M files. So you are able to just have a single vault and then divide up the permissions within it. So I want to go into this accounting vault to begin with and just kind of show you the layout of what things look like in the interface. So you'll see over here on the left-hand side our ability to create new information in the vault. So this is these are just some quick access links if I want to add in new clients or customers, uh, contact events for those people, new employees, fiscal years, and so on. And all of this, everything that you're going to see in here is completely customizable. So from as far as terminology or certain uh, features or functions that you need to make available, all of that is very flexible and customizable for your particular environment. Uh, down underneath here in the, the go-to section, these again are just some quick access 
items to allow you to quickly get back to this home screen where we are or to see documents or other information that's assigned to you or checked out to you. So I want to call attention to this particular section right here that says assigned to me because one of mFile's real strengths is its workflow capabilities. So as you have documents that are saved into mFiles, they can either automatically be put into a workflow. You can also manually introduce something to a workflow. So, you know, in particular, as we're talking about uh, accounting processes and invoices, purchase orders, statements, things like that, that may need to go through approval processes and ultimately payment processes, that those documents can be assigned to the correct person as it goes through. And as they are assigned into a particular person's queue, they will not only see it here on the home screen in mFiles, so this acts somewhat like a dashboard to immediately present you with things that are assigned to you, but they'll also receive an email notification letting them know that a new invoice or a new purchase order or, or whatever it happens to be has been assigned to them in a queue. So you you don't have to be monitoring M files all the time. You are going to get those alerts through your email as well if you choose to. Um, the checked out to me view, you'll notice that I don't see a checked out to me section here, but it works exactly like assigned to me is if you have something assigned or checked out, then it will show right here on the home screen. If you do not have anything assigned or checked out, it will not appear. So this, again, is like a live dashboard view as soon as you come into the vault. And then you also have the ability to establish favorites to documents and other information. And that works just like a web browser. When you assign a favorite, it's immediately accessible to you in a short list. And then recently accessed by me are those, those documents or any other information that you have worked with in the last 30 days. So all of these links on the left hand side give you access to this frequent information really without ever having to search for it or even drill into any of these view structures that we're going to talk a little bit more about. Uh, however, as Robin was saying, we do have a very powerful search functionality. And so if you do not have those particular files or documents that you're looking for in any of these quick access locations, then you can always come up to the search bar and type in any particular search terms that you happen to be looking for. And this can be one word or multiple words. Again, just like Google, so you're able to put in as many words as you want to. We can put quotes around it to do exact phrases or we can just uh, search without the quotes and let it find all of those words as they happen to appear. And when you get search results uh, that come up, so I'm going to do a search for ESTT because I know that that is uh, one of the customers in our vault. If we do a search for something like that, you'll see that in the results, it is doing a hit highlight on the particular term that shows up. We can click on any one of these documents and over on the right hand side we will see all of the metadata or the information that has been tagged to this particular document that would help us find it and sort it into these particular views that we have. And then you also have a preview pane over here which will allow you to preview that document on the right hand side without ever actually having to double click and open that document. And this will work for any of the file types that you have saved in here as long as you have an appropriate viewer. So if we're looking at Excel files, Word files, PDF, etc., you'll be able to see any of those on the right hand side. And you'll also notice that the hit highlighting also works inside the document. So when you talk about the, the Google functionality within the software, that applies to everything that is stored in M files. It's not just the metadata, it is also the contents of the file. And that's really important because obviously we want to tag these documents the most accurate and 
efficient way possible to find them again, but you will also have the entire content of the document available to you when you do your searching. So if I wanted, for example, to find the word assets in this document, it's not necessary that I, nece that I absolutely have that as part of my metadata. It would still find it uh, just because it's in the content of the document. And in that case, I would then see the word assets highlighted in the document as well. You'll also notice here across the top that we have several column headings and this works exactly like column headings in Windows Explorer because remember this really is embedded in Windows Explorer. We still have our address bar and menu just like normal. We have right click functionality that gives us quick access to some of the most frequently used commands. We do have drag and drop functionality. So as I mentioned before, where most programs would require you to upload or drag and drop, we do have that uh, M drive integration, but we do also have the drag and drop ease of use. So if there were a file out on my desktop, for example, that I wanted to get into uh, my M files environment, I could easily just drag and drop it directly on top of the screen and it would pop up what we call the metadata card asking me how I want to save this document. Now this is the same metadata card that you would see if you were in any application and you chose to uh, save that document directly to M files. So if I were to start up Word and I, let's say that I were going to create a proposal and let's say it's going to be for ESTT Corporation, which is this uh, fictitious company that we just saw in the window. And we want to do a proposal for their website. And let's say that we're going to charge them uh, $2,500 for <clears throat> the uh, website modifications that they've requested. Let me close this window back here just so it's out of the way. Uh, so at this point I've started a Word document and all I need to do is save it to my vault. Now you'll see that in Microsoft Office we do have a full integration across all of the applications. So there's an additional tab that's added into the application that allows you to open files from M files, save directly to M files, we can check in and check out the documents, do comparisons across the documents, and even insert information into the document from the metadata. Now, those are grayed out because we haven't saved it to M files yet, but once it's been saved, we can go access any of that information and pull it into the document. That can also be done with uh, templates as well. So if we want to set up a template that would automatically insert metadata, we can do that, for example, for contracts, maybe in this case proposals, and we can automatically pull in uh, customer information, payment information, and so on that's already saved in that vault. So <clears throat> all of this is available on the tab, but remember, as we said, we integrate into all of the Windows programs, particularly with Office, and so we could just click the Save icon. And when we tell it to save, it's going to ask us where we want to save it. Normally, this would go directly to your vault, as I mentioned, because most companies would only have a single vault. <clears throat> I just had one extra step, and that was to pick which vault I was going to. But now I can tell it to save that document, and it will pop up and ask me what type of document I'm saving. Now, this is really the key right here is to uh, determine your document type. Because if I were to call this, um, let's say if I were going to call it a contract type document, you'll see certain information that it is asking me to populate. If I were to populate this information for a contract, then it would be available to me to search based on any of this information I provide. But since we know that this is a proposal, 
if I were to start typing in and put in that this is a proposal type document, you'll see that some of the metadata options change. <clears throat> so the system is very dynamic according to the type of document that you're saving. If you were putting a proposal in here, that's going to require different metadata options than if it were a contract or some other type of document. So it's adapting to what you're telling it that you want to save. And then we can just quickly go through and select all of the information that we need to, such as the document date. We can choose a client, which we know here is ESTT Corporation. Uh, we could put an effective through date. So let's say we only want this proposal to be effective through the end of the month. And at this point, you'll see that we have filled in everything that is starred or has an asterisk by it, which was a required property. And so we could go ahead and click create, which will actually save the document. Now we can just close it and it's going to ask us if we want to check that document in, which will say yes. Now in M files where the document has now been saved, the easiest way that I could get back to that particular file is just to go to the recently accessed by me view. And here we will see that proposal that's been saved. And since it's been, since it was just accessed by me and it's reverse sorted, I can see it right there at the top of the list. Now you can see that all of the metadata has been saved along with it. And we could also come out here and actually see a preview of that document. Now it's possible to continue editing this file and make changes as we go. So if I were to determine that that uh, proposal amount actually needed to be updated, then I could double click this file to open it and it's going to ask me if I want to check it out. So if I check this out, then it's checked out only for editing to me. So anyone else that has rights to it can read the document, they just won't be able to make edits at the same time that I am. There is also an option for collaborative editing if you uh, choose to do that. Either one of those are options as you are checking out a document. So I might say that I want to change this $2,500 amount to $4,000. And now I can save that document and close it again. And it asks me if I want to check it in. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to check it back into the system. And at this point, you can see in the preview pane, it's now showing the $4,000 that I just changed it to. But there is a full history available on documents on any of the information in the vault that has been edited. So here you will see if we click on history that there are two different versions of this document. <clears throat> Version 1, we can see all of the metadata that's available, including when it was created, but we see it was modified two minutes later, which of course is the change that we just made right here. And so the metadata of this particular document has not changed, but the contents have. And so if I were to uh, display my preview pane over on the right side of this history window right here, we'll see that version one is still showing in the preview 2500, but version two is showing 4000. So I do have access to what the document looked like in its prior versions, as well as what the metadata of that document was. So it's giving you a full audit trail of all of the information saved into the vault at any given time. <clears throat> now, as Robin mentioned about always having access to the latest version, anytime I see a file listed in the window right here, it is showing me the latest version by default. As you see, I can always get back to a prior version by going to the history, but there's no question at this point about whether I am looking at the latest version in that main window. So in this case, if we were to uh, take uh, certain document types and let's just save another, create another Word document here, and let's just say this were a tax return and it is for uh, the year 2000, a tax return for the year 2014 that we want to save into our vault. Notice we can tell it that we want to save it. We want it to go into our accounting vault. 
and so we click Save. It's going to ask us what type of document this is. Now I know that one of my document types is tax return, so I can just uh, type in a T and it will immediately start filtering that list. So if I choose that it's a tax return, this could be for a particular client. It may be an internal tax return. So client is optional, but I can at least fill in some additional information. And let's say that I actually put 2014 in the file, but let's say it were for fiscal year 2015. We could put a date on it, which might be today's date. And that's the only other required property that I need. So I could create this document, but notice that it is also going into a workflow. It's asking for an approval on this tax return that's going to put it into a draft state. So initially I'm saving this tax return into the vault uh, and it is going into a workflow that we will be uh, putting into this approval process. And so I can check this document in directly from this window. And since it's in the workflow, now you'll see various options that have been presented to us over on the left-hand side. Uh, these options would only be presented to the people who have permission to actually take that action on the document in the workflow. So they could either uh, push it to waiting for client input or waiting for a client review, waiting for internal approval or ultimately approved and we can move it through any of these states simply by clicking the button, uh, putting in any optional comments, you know, waiting for client, and clicking OK. And then we'll see if we look at the metadata of this particular document that it has gone from the draft state to waiting for client input. And we could continue moving it through these uh, through these various workflow states as we need to to get it all the way through the process. As I mentioned earlier, as things are assigned and moved through the process, there could be email notifications going out. This might also include email notifications to your customers. So that whether we're talking about a tax return for a customer like this, or it might just be an invoice that you are sending to a customer, there are a couple of different ways that you could do that. One thing that you could easily do is just right click on the document and you'll see down here in the menu is the ability to share and email documents. And so we could send a copy by email, which would be a copy of the Word document right here, or we could say that we want to send it as a PDF by email. So if I were to click that, to send as a PDF by email, you'll see that it started up an email for me and attached the resulting PDF version of that document. So it's available at this point for me to email the document out to my client. Uh, the other thing that we could do on here is to actually publish this document to a portal. <coughs> Excuse me. And if we were to publish this document out, we could actually make it available to our customers where they could come in through a web portal and access it any time that they want to. So they could receive an email notification that lets them know that they need to come out to your mFiles website, log into it. Now in their case, <coughs> they would not need to choose a vault to log into. It could automatically take them into it. Now once they're in the vault, we could actually control what this interface looks like so that they are limited in the views that they see. They might only see those things that are currently assigned to them. And in that case, that tax return may have hit a particular state in the workflow where it's actually assigned to the customer. And so they would come into this portal just to see what's assigned to them and make their final approval, which they would also see on the left-hand side. So you can tell that the web interface is nearly identical 
to what we have in the Windows environment. So I just wanted to show you that as an example of how you might make electronic information available to outside individuals, either by emailing the documents or just having them published out through the portal, which could completely be done from your mFiles interface, but then giving outside access to certain people that you choose, or as you saw, they would have to log in to the system with a username and password that you could supply to them, and then they could work on that document <clears throat> within your particular network. That makes it much easier not to have to pass this information back and forth through email. It can stay in a workflow so that if <clears throat> the client has not taken a particular action within a certain period of time, reminder emails could automatically be generated or you could be alerted to the fact that they have not picked it up and you can then go back to them and ask them to take the appropriate action. <clears throat> So one of the last things that I wanted to show here uh, was actually what, what we can do if we are bringing some documents in. So in an accounting area, uh, it's obviously can be very paper intensive. And so there are a lot of times that we actually need to scan documents in. So <clears throat> one of the document types that we have here as an example is a purchase invoice. So let's say that we have received an invoice from one of our vendors uh, that actually needs to be paid and we want to introduce this into M files into a workflow process. So here I can just simulate scanning this document by dragging and dropping it into a purchase invoice folder. So if you were scanning this document from a, from a scanner or a multifunction device, and scan directly to a network folder, you would see that it goes into that folder and then will eventually disappear at a time that we specify. So that is M files just monitoring that particular folder <clears throat> to pick up the file and bring it into the system. So if we go into our M files environment into that particular vault, we know that that was a a purchase invoice, so that's where we should be able to find it in M files. So all of these various views, like Robin mentioned, in the same way that music is stored on your phone, we don't have to tell it where to go, we just tell it what it is. Well in this case, we already have that purchase invoice set up so that when it's scanned, the system knows that it is a purchase invoice and could actually even read some information off of it. So with your music, you don't have to tell it where to go find a song. It just presents various views to you essentially that says you can see your songs by uh, the title of the song or you can see them grouped by the album or the artist or the genre. In this case, what you're seeing is that we can look at all of the files in our M file system. We can look at all of the documents. We go in here in various ways. We could look at them by the class classification or type of document that they are. We might look at them grouped by the customer that they're associated with or a project that they're associated with. Here you'll see with proposals, if you remember uh, the proposal that I saved earlier, it had an effective through date. Well, we could use that metadata to create a view and say, show me only those proposals that are expiring within a certain amount of time. That means they are valid through, let's say, show me all the proposals that will be expiring within 30 days or those that have already expired and so on. So we can easily group all of our information exactly how we want to see it. And that's what's so powerful about M files compared to really any other system is that typically you are always defining exactly how you're going to see something and that's the only way you can do it. But with M files, these views can be created by an administrator and pushed out, but it's also possible for an end user to create their own views. So you'll see right here that every user has the ability to create their own views and on this home screen, you'll see a section of my views and common views. So if the particular view that you want to see doesn't exist, 
you can make your own and that would be almost the same thing as creating your own playlist uh, of your music is that everything that you have access to is available to you but let's say you don't want to see it by song title or genre or album you want to pick and choose exactly what you see and exactly how you see it well you can create in your own view which is like creating your own playlist and say this is how I want to see it and this is how I want to see it today which may be different from how I want to see it tomorrow so if we go into our documents and we look at our documents by class or the type of document that they are we know that we just put a purchase invoice into the system so if we go into purchase invoices right here you will see the invoice that was scanned in just modified about three minutes ago and you'll see some information that came in with it um, it was first of all assigned into a workflow it was assigned as a purchase invoice and it did have a customer assigned to it but I can tell you that it actually picked up the customer information directly from uh, the information on the document ANA consulting is showing right here on the document it actually read that information with our OCR feature and plugged it in as metadata so in some of these cases it's possible to actually scan the document and not have a user touch them at all or at least get as much information in here as we can and then have the user just finish off entering some information so we might put a document date of 127 and we might come in and assign it to a project and one thing that I want you to notice here about the project is that right now this document has come in as full control for all internal users but as soon as I choose a particular project it will change the permissions now that's one of the other ways that we can use this metadata is to have it control the permissions according to certain information that is selected and that means that one user may have access while another user does not based on whether they are associated with that particular project so at this point once it gets saved it has gone into this workflow with the appropriate permissions and here you'll see that it's enforcing that I put in a dollar amount and now when we save this document it's now sitting in that workflow and could also be assigned to the appropriate person which if I go back to my home view I'll also see that particular invoice is now sitting in my assigned to me view and so I'm able to see it sitting in that queue and would have also received an email notification which we could go check very quickly in Outlook and see that that particular email has come into the system that I've received an email for a purchase invoice that needs to be checked I have a deadline and if I don't meet that deadline then we could take some other action at that point so the user only has to click the link in the email and it will open directly to that particular document in M files for them to go ahead and move it through the workflow and I might say that yes it is now awaiting approval and push it directly into that state so <clears throat> that that wraps up what I was going to show for the demonstration portion and you know around the uh, the particular items that we wanted to point out is being able to save these uh, tax and revenue type documents so you saw as I was saving a tax return that I could specify uh, what the document is a uh, particular workflow it might go into even modifying permissions on it um, and then the ability to restrict those permissions as to who can see it and who can take particular action on it once it's in that workflow and and finally then being able to digitally route these documents either through email or through any portals that are already available just as an out-of-the-box solution with them files so installing that software can immediately make that portal available without any additional programming at all so with that I'll turn it back over uh, to Robin and the team at DN and see if we have any questions
No, I, I think we're good. And um, Michelle, do we have any questions for anybody in the audience or? Um, real fast, I just want to thank you all again for joining. We hope this session was beneficial. If you are interested in learning more about M-Files or any other product offerings uh, that DM offers, please contact us at 877-669-3700, or you can send an email inquiry to info at dm.com. And with that, we'll go ahead and see if there are any questions posted. And again, just a reminder, if you're unsure how to post a question, you'll want to go to the question section in the GoToWebinar control panel. So far, I'm not seeing any questions posted. I'll give it just a minute or so. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any questions at this time. Again, if something does come up, feel free to contact us at info at dm.com.